Hello and welcome, my name is Chris from ChristopherHole.com. Thanks for coming to watch this video where we're going to be talking about rotator cuff strains. We're going to talk about a few different things. We're going to talk about what it is. We're going to talk about some anatomy and then we are going to look at some causes and um, potential treatments. So to start off with what it is, um, it's obviously a condition of the shoulder. Now 70% of all shoulder pain is the supraspinatus tendon and I'll talk about what that is um, in a second. The weakest point is one centimeter from the attachment to the greater tuberosity of the humerus. Now the supraspinatus is the rotator cuff that comes across the top of the scapula. Now if I was to spin this body around what you would see is the shoulder blade and then you've got a little groove um, across the top of the shoulder blade and it sort of sits in that groove and then what it does is it comes underneath the shoulder blade and the clavicle here, the collarbone, and then joins onto the top part of the humerus, which is known as the greater tuberosity. It then attaches in there, and this first centimetre is the weakest point. And this is where the, the tears uh, normally happen. So there are sort of a couple of causes. One is a, a traumatic, so that's um, f a fall or a heavy lift. So that could be one initial impact that causes the injury or what is maybe more common is an overuse. Now that could be done um, one of two ways, age, just because you're using your shoulder more because you're older, um, or use. So you're just doing a lot of repetitive uh, movements that are causing the, uh, the, sh the, the elbow to go above the shoulder, which depending on how you do it, will uh, sort of squeeze the, um, squeeze the uh, supraspinatus up into uh, the clavicle and the scapula or the, the AC joint, the acromioclavicular joint. Um, some potential treatments, obviously once you've gone through the initial treatments of uh, allowing it to heal, um, when we're into the sort of uh, rehabilitation uh, phase of it, you would look, be looking at mobility exercises. So it's mob, um, mobilizing the whole joint. I would um, potentially look at mobilizing all ranges of movement because you may have um, certain compensations or certain tightness through the joint which is going to warrant them being mobilized as well but certainly mobilizing the supraspinatus and using um, very sort of basic um, massage techniques to deliver blood to the area and using what's called frictions which are just um, very acute um, uh, pressure um, with, or with the thumb onto the affected muscle and um, tendon. So it's just making sure that you're able then to bring function back to the shoulder. Then you may think about using strengthening and stabilizing exercises. So to start with um, isometric holds, making sure the shoulder joint is stable within itself using isometric exercises um, or static exercises, and then introducing uh, mobilization and weighted um, moving exercises back into the muscles to strengthen it concentrically and eccentrically. Uh, so just a quick summary before I finish. It's a common exercise of the supraspinatus uh, tendon which is the rotator cuff on the top of the shoulder. The weakest point is the first centimeter of that attachment. There are two causes which is a traumatic heavy lift or a fall or an overuse due to age or repetitive use. Treating it, obviously after the initial rehabilitation, uh, it would be mobility exercises and then massage using basic effluage, petrissage and frictions onto the rotator cuff muscle and then moving on to um, functional stability exercises of the shoulder. So many thanks for watching. My name is Chris from ChristopherHole.com. I'll speak to you soon.